This earthquake is one of the worst disasters in Japan's history. What made it so powerful and how does it compare to other recent quakes? Joining me now with some answers is Dr. Marsha McNutt, director of the U.S. Geological Survey. Great to have you with us, Dr. McNutt. Thank you, Rebecca, for inviting me to talk to you today. This situation, um, as it stands, is, is very of a very high magnitude, an 8.9 earthquake. Put that into perspective. Well, uh, if we could only harness the energy from this earthquake, it would power the city the size of Los Angeles for an entire year. An entire year of power. Yes. And something like this, what does it create in terms of the aftermath and the aftershocks that take place? Well, that's the unnerving part of it, is that it's not just the five minutes of shaking from this earthquake, but it keeps going on and on and on in terms of disrupting the lives of not only the citizens, but the relief workers. There's um, something called Amori's Law, which governs the aftershocks, mm. that um, there's aftershocks on day one and half as many aftershocks on day two and one-third as many aftershocks on day three. And it keeps going on for literally years afterwards, disrupting the lives. The largest aftershock from an 8.9 earthquake will be a 7.8 earthquake, which in and of itself is a large tremor. So we could see a very large tremor in the aftermath. Given what you say about Amori's law and the continuation and what you see going forward, what are we in for in this case? Well, the aftershocks themselves could bring down buildings that have already been stressed by the main shock itself, and they will hamper the um, efforts of the relief workers. How long could this last? Well, as I say, it will taper off in time, but it could go on for years. It could go on for years. What does science tell us right now about our ability to foresee something like this coming? Well, um, science tells us that it's very difficult to predict earthquakes, but of course, this earthquake was preceded by foreshocks. And we are trying to install something called the Advanced National Seismic System, which can give an advanced warning of an event like this, which would allow uh, safe shutdown of systems, electrical systems, gas systems, which can lessen the impact of an event just like this. Given what you're saying about conditions and the fact that this could continue to be an issue, what are conditions like on the ground and what should people in Japan be thinking and doing right now? Well, um, of course, everyone at the U.S. Geological Survey sends their thoughts and prayers to the people in Japan. I've heard a lot of good ideas, for example, going to People Finder on Google mm -hmm. uh, to put their, the names in of people they want to find. Um, but basically, um, don't hamper the uh, efforts of the relief workers. Uh, stay out of the way for those who are trying to help. Uh, basically, um, to uh, send money, don't try to send uh, things there. Those are the important things that you can be doing. In the event of an earthquake, where is the safest place for you to be? Be under something sturdy, like a desk or a table. Be away from windows. Be away from doors. Don't run outside. Get under something strong and hold on for dear life. Dr. Marcia McNutt, you'll be with us later in the program to continue this conversation and whether or not it's something that could happen here in the United States. We appreciate it. Thank you, Rebecca.